right click, you can auto size text box. You can also hit Alt Z to do that as well. Now you can automatically do that by going under review preferences and under the tools and markups. There's a checks box in here that says auto size text box and call up markups. Now I always have this on and I would recommend everyone turn this on. I had it off just to show you what happens when you don't have it on, but I'm going to check it and I really always have it on. So now I make a markup and a call out and I type something in. You can see that automatically made it the right size. If I make a text box and type testing test again, makes it the right size automatically. You occasionally do still have to hit Alt Z. If I drag this out, I'll still have to hit it sometimes, but it probably reduces the amount of times you have to hit it by like 90%. So again, I would recommend everyone turn that on. You'll also notice under this little style box, it gives you some line spacing. So I often make these a little bit smaller, kind of instead of putting a little white buffer around your text, you can do that. It doesn't really matter that much for text, but sometimes you might want to mess around with that. Now where that really will matter is under my second item is you can change the shape of a text box or you can add a leader. And so just taking this one, for example, if I go up to this little dialog box at the top, I can change it to any of these four shapes. Now, if you work in construction, you probably want to do the triangle one quite a bit. And by making the, these margins really small and making your text really small, and again, hitting Alt Z, you can make this look like a really nice triangle box that you could use for construction for change orders or, or whatever you're going to use it for. Similarly, in design, we are often using the circle. So I can make this a note if I want. You can see these little circles right here. You can make it look like the plan's going to look. So I think this can be super helpful. Additionally, you can another right click feature. You can right click and add a leader. So again, I find myself doing this a lot. I have a circle, I have my leader. I can basically draw my markups to look just like I want my plans to look. You can actually even have more than one leader. You can call multiple things out if you want to do it. Or you can actually right click and delete the leader by if you click on the leader you want to delete and then click delete leader, you can remove the leader as well. So a couple cool little tricks you can do with text boxes. The last thing I wanted to show you under the right click menu is adding points or curves. Again, if you've been messing around with Bluebeam for a while, you probably know this already, but I have gotten a bunch of questions about this recently. So I figured I'd show everyone how to do it. So this is a polygon shape. So you can see under here, polygon, it's different than a square, different than a circle. There's a bunch of different types of shapes. Similarly with the lines, there is a polyline, which is the one with the squiggly. Now a polyline is basically like multiple lines connected to each other. And so it's different than a regular line. And so that matters when you're doing points and curves. So if I right click on a line, I don't have, I guess there's some options in here that are missing. If I click on a polyline and right click, you can see I have this control point, add a control point, or convert to arc. Now again, that control point and convert to arc don't show up in the line. They also don't show up in the rectangle. So really where you're going to be able to do these curves and adding points is under the polyline. So I'm going to just come in here and draw a new polygon and double click. Now that I've drawn it, I can right click and convert to arc. And I get these two little handles where I can kind of adjust things as I want. So again, not the spiffiest thing in the world, but I think it can be pretty helpful. Similarly, when you're drawing a polyline, you can do the same thing. You can add in convert to arc as well. You can also right click control point, add a control point. So if I want to make this longer, I can add in another control point. Just kind of gives you a little bit more power to draw stuff in. A shortcut for this is just by holding the shift key. I can hold shift and you can see that little plus sign next to my cursor. I can add a point really quickly like that. And similarly, I can hover over an existing point, hold shift and delete that as well. Unfortunately, and maybe there's a way I haven't figured it out. It's not easy to remove arcs for some reason. So once you make an arc, you're kind of stuck with it. But one use case that I have found for this is doing curb ramps. So if I want to measure an area of a curb ramp, I want to measure the mono curb in sidewalk, I can right click on this square, convert to arc, and now I can get a pretty accurate area using the curve. So that is what I wanted to show you guys with this.